Well, hey there, gang. Got a good one today. This is a real object of surpassing beauty. It's a Gibson ES-275. I think this one is from 2016, which is the year this model was first produced. I know it looks old, like it was designed in the 50s maybe, but this is a relatively new model for Gibson. It's made in Memphis. It's a thin line guitar, about two inches deep, and it's fully hollow. There's no central support block. I guess the closest cousin would be a Birdland, although this has a standard uh, 24 and 3 quarter inch scale, where the Birdlands have that weird short scale. And um, the selector switch on a Birdland is usually on the treble side. This one's more like a Les Paul. This is very nicely made. The fit and finish are excellent in this case. I know it's popular to jump all over Gibson, but yeah, it's true in the sort of later 2000 teens, things did, some funny stuff left the factory, you know, and there were reasons for that. This one's a good one. Um, so what does it need? It needs a strap button, and the pickup selector is very, very stiff. On this model, instead of the standard plastic poker chip, they've used a rubber grommet-like thing, uh, which is kind of flexible. But yeah, it's very stiff. As for the strap button, this is my customer who does not like them on the heel, and especially not through the back like this. Uh, he wants it on the upper bout, which, you know, it poses some challenges on a hollow body with F-holes, because I need to back the screw up with some support, you know. This guitar is, it's not heavy, but it's not light either. And hanging it on, you know, three millimeters worth of side thickness is asking for calamity. So I have to make up an interior support block that will fit between the curved lining strips on the inside of the guitar, for one thing, um, but also provide enough gluing surface to spread out that load over a wider area so all the force isn't applied on one little spot on the side. Let's see if we can tackle the switch first. Got my knurled ring remover tool here. Rather than electronics cleaner, what this thing really needs is lubrication. I mean, I'll shoot some stuff on the contacts when it's open, but I think some light oil or even grease is what's called for to unseize that little pivot axle, because we're dealing with friction here. And there's a bunch of thick metal shielded wires attached to this thing, and those are going to get in the way of me trying to insert the backing blocks. So I'll probably end up pushing all this stuff out of the way into the recesses, so I should probably make some means of retrieving it. One nice thing to do before pushing this thing away into the depths is to mark one side so you know which way it's oriented. There's nothing worse than getting it tightened back down again and finding out that your neck and your bridge pickups are reversed. That's the sound of a nut against the rubber. It's not me damaging the knurled edge. Interesting. It's got a ring of black around here. Why would they do that? I'm just going to use a little bit of 3-in-1 oil here. It's sort of a penetrating lubricant. And a couple of spots I want to hit. The first is the little axle here. On both sides there. The other place would be the end of the switch here that uh, pulls the contacts apart. Sometimes that can get kind of gummy uh, or dried out. And uh, a little bit of lubrication on that would help. Just a little bit, you know, don't go wild. Yeah, let's work it back and forth a bit here. Much better. And you're going to tip it over on its side. Hopefully. And 
see if we can sort of push it down towards the pickup a bit. Before it goes too far, I'm going to tape off this first string here. Because I'm going to have another string shortly. One benefit of this large hole is it lets me see where the neck block is in there. I'm starting to suspect that it's this diameter because of the thin body and the fact that the switch is so tall that there might not be enough room to pull it up if it was in a standard half inch hole. You know what I mean? You have to lever it upwards. This is a 564th drill bit. chunk of mahogany. It's probably three-eighths of an inch, maybe ten millimeters. And uh, I'm going to cut it down to probably around, I don't know, eighteen millimeters wide. And in terms of depth, we'll have to measure that. The thickness of the plies for the top here, and presumably also for the back, seems to be just around five millimeters. Bet you that binding is a quarter of an inch, or six millimeters, yeah, just about. So, hmm, if we figure on the lining strips being half an inch, it could be five eighths. So, yeah, there's not very much width available for us to fit something between them. I'm going to have to make this little block radius to follow the curve of the side here. And just checking this out, subtracting, you know, about three millimeters for the width, I think this nine and a half inch block will get us in the ballpark. <laughs> I intend to work carefully and be neat, but I'll protect the inside of the back with a paper towel just in case the glue coated block falls from my grasp. Here I'm putting a hard 180 degree bend in a length of B string uh, using a pair of pliers so it's folded over very tightly and precise. This becomes like a, a very tight fish hook. I'll send it through the strap button pilot hole and uh, use it to mate with a similar bend on a G string or a D string that's been threaded through the support block. Sorry about the sound of my oscillating fan in the background. It was a hot day. Having this extra large switch hole here located where it is is kind of a luxury. Ordinarily this would be done through the F hole which is a much longer traverse and it requires a bit more finesse. Oops, I almost forgot to clean the sidewall where the glue is going to be. This is good practice, though to be honest, the screw itself will hold these two parts together when we're finished here. Still, good idea to keep it clean. Finally, the glue, and I'm pretty generous with it. Again, if this was going through the F hole, I would attach another wire on the opposite side of the block so I could keep it in tension and it would be suspended all the way across and not dragging on the back, perhaps losing all its glue along the way. Here I'm just using the hemostats to make sure that it's oriented in the right direction when it does come into contact with the sides. I'll snip off some of the excess wire and then wind it up tight using the tuner clamp. Drilling the correct diameter pilot hole is pretty important. I'm actually going to use two drills. The first is sized to the outside diameter of the screw threads, and I'm only going to go through the side, not any deeper. 
The second drill will allow the screw to thread itself in cleanly into the support block. And I'm using one of these little felt discs, um, which also prevents too much pressure from building up on the surface and possibly cracking the lacquer. Thinking about this wobbly rubber grommet here, I'm wondering if I sandwich a washer in there. It's about the same size as the interior hole. Uh, I'll have to drill it out so that it can accommodate the, um, the shaft on the switch, but that might take up some of that excess room, keep things from moving around as much. Okay, Adam, you could have helped me with this one. I know, it's super sketchy, but it kind of worked. Drill it out, deburred it, and finalized the size using a little grinding stone. In the end, I abandoned the washer idea because it took up too much vertical space and it didn't do what I really wanted it to do. I take it back what I said. This is poor engineering. I figured out what the black circle is for. This grommet is never going to sit perfectly concentric. It's always going to be squished on one side or the other. So this thing just gives the illusion of concentricity. Okay, there's something more insidious about this thing. Um, it's easier to operate than it was, but it still doesn't feel right. It feels too stiff. Um, here's the diagram here. This is in cross-section. This is the rubber grommet. This is the switch arm. These are the contact springs. So what's happening is when you flip the switch and you push the contact away there's no free space for it to move in here. You have to overcome the pressure of all of that rubber behind it. The end of the switch arm pushes against the inner surface of the grommet, as you can see here. Which is frankly, you know, kind of ridiculous. I'm told that this mounting system was used in the past to cut down on the acoustic transfer of the sound of switching that can happen on a full body like hollow body, like an L5 or the 400s. Um, you know, you flip the switch and sometimes you, you can hear it through an amp. Um, maybe I can cut away a little bit of that offending rubber there, but what happens if I go too far and the grommet's toast? You know, what then? And what's like the real way to do this so that it functions the way I'd expect? You know, because it's stiffer than any Les Paul I've ever played. Um, why not just switch it for the regular poker chip? can't do it because this hole is now too large. You can't really put a washer or something behind it because you wouldn't be able to get the switch up through the hole. Uh, maybe you buy a right angle switch like the ones that are used in thin guitars like an SG. You could plug this big hole, redrill it, try to keep it centered. Um, and of course that means pulling a bunch of wires so a 10 minute switch job becomes two hours. In the end I realized I wasn't getting enough purchase on the nut so I resorted to vice grips and really compressed that rubber. This gained an extra millimeter or so and it lightened the load a bit and it made operation easier. The owner and I were just joking about swapping this out for a Telecaster switch, you know, making a nice tortoise cover plate and have it be like a switch master. Uh, it's okay. It's not, it's not bad. The wiggle though in the rubber, I don't like that at all. I recognize why it's there as a vibration isolator, but it just feels so wrong. You know, in my mind, loose electronics have a way of breaking solder joints over time. Anyway, this is Gibson's traditional solution, so they went with it here. Um, I like everything else about this guitar. It's got a nice set of sort of PAF style humbuckers that are very sparkly. And for some reason, it really wanted me to play bent notes with an Indian flavor.